issuance, a flood of issuances of treasuries happening that no one is talking about. And I think that has to be uh, emphasized. It's I don't think it's transitory at all what we're seeing. I think it, it's kind of a mix of the 40s and the 70s in a way. We're seeing the, the wage spiral growth like we saw in the 60s and 70s with financial repression from policymakers where you have very low interest rates relative to our inflation is. I think this is the most aggressive interest rate policy we've seen in history. Um, and at the same time, we're starting to see investors buying into tangible assets, creating this feedback loop into inflation in a big way. I think that's not going to end. I think that's uh, happening at a time when commodities have been so cheap and happening at a time when capex for producers in commodity space has been dismal for many years. And so it all wraps it on to one idea, which is buying commodities and hedging with shorting equities, in my opinion. All right. Well, on a scale of one to 10, how risky do you think the U.S. equity market is at the moment? I'll, I'll point it as an eight. Uh, and I, if I could just justify my, my answer, I would say it has to do with valuations and where I think we may see a move in interest rates as well in 10-year yields. Uh, valuations across many metrics, if you look in very different ways from median aggregate terms, clearly we are at all-time highs in terms of valuations across any other decade or, or time in history. And so uh, I'm very concerned about that. I don't know how you, you will be able to justify that if cost of capital begins to rise due to inflation. I think we'll have some changes. All right. So equities are very overvalued. And I want to break down the commodity to equity ratio, which is at a 50-year low. So what does that tell us? What does it mean for commodities and what does it mean for equities? It's a good question. And I think, I think it tells you, first of all, that the risk in equity markets is to uh, is, is that we may see a reckoning moment from valuations being so disconnected from uh, where fundamentals are. At the same time, if you're able to look for industries, especially in the software world, software companies have been trading at multiples we've never seen before, with estimations of free cash flow uh, way far in the future, uh, which can only be justified with a very low interest rate environment and very low cost of capital environment which I'm not sure that's going to be the case given the fact that inflation is starting to change here. So it, it, it's very much in line with the growth versus value rotation, what you're seeing with the commodities to equity ratio being at all time or 50 years lows. I think it's an incredible opportunity to be allocating capital in precious metals, commodities in general, but especially precious metals, given the fact that we're seeing fiscal monetary disorder that I think it leads to uh, people are starting to buy into alternatives of the monetary system. And I think gold and silver will play into that role in a large way. You say that the interest rate situation is not going to change. Yeah. Does that mean you don't expect the Fed to, to take action? No, I, I, what I meant by that is, look, there's, a, there's a, issuance, a flood of issuances of treasuries happening that no one is talking about. And I think that has to be uh, emphasized. It's about $650 billion of bonds and notes have been issued just in the last uh, three months. And the Federal Reserve bought about 40% of that. And so the Fed is saying that they're not gonna be buying as much as they have been. And the government is clearly transitioning from a composition of that that used to be mostly T-bills, which is short duration bonds, uh, and increasing their duration to issuing more longer duration treasuries. Um, and, and so how, how does that not impact 10-year yields going forward? I find it difficult to think that how 10-year yields are not going to be at 25 to 3%. And the question is, does copper, oil, agricultural commodities, do they even care about that? I don't think so. I think we still are in the most financially repressed environment we have ever seen and with very aggressive policies. And so I think inflation will continue to, to build up on itself. It's going to become psychological to consumers at some point. I think the gene is out of the bottom in terms of that. Uh, and uh, I think we'll have an impact of rotation out of very hype overvalued names. All right, let's talk about the money supply because obviously that, there has been money flooded into the system at an unprecedented level. What does the M2 supply mean when you look at it relative to silver? Oh, it's probably the most interesting chart and, and thesis you can potentially think. I mean, silver fits right in between this 
monetary disorder, uh, which we're seeing throughout the world, not just in the US. It's an important distinction of what a lot of people usually say. Um, but at the same time, there's, a, there's an issue with a lack of, of exploration in the gold and silver space, and silver being a major one here, where I think supply is gonna start playing a major role in impacting prices. And silver is, for me, the cheapest metal on earth. I've said this maybe a few times. And um, I will continue to buy that because I don't, I don't think it deserves to be sub $30 an ounce today, where inflation is, where commodities are, uh, where the market is in general. I think we're gonna see flows of capital coming into the space and it's a very thin market. So you know, I would expect to see some explosive move to the upside. Explosive move to the upside for silver, yep. driven by what? Triggered by what? Well, there's a lot of potential triggers. Number one, inflation is, is something that could potentially cause people to start buying silver. Number two, uh, it has to do with the green revolution. Uh, clearly, that's a fiscal part of the agenda. Uh, or I think it's a fiscal agenda has never been so extensive. There's so many things from peak inequality to green agenda, infrastructure revamp, and so forth. Uh, I think it could be the other trigger has to do with supply. We're seeing issues with finding discoveries of silver uh, in a big way. And, uh, you know, in, in general, capital allocation has completely ignored that as a alternative of investment. And I think uh, that will return. All right. So silver is the most undervalued precious metal, according to you. And you paint a picture as to why it will go higher. A lot of people would argue that it should have already gone higher, and the reason that it hasn't is because the silver market is manipulated. That because silver is critical to so many industries, that there are certain very big players that have a vested interest in suppressing the price of silver, yep. and as industrial demand for silver continues to surge, they anticipate that trend to continue. What do you say to that? I think that the macro reasons to own silver are much larger than, than any, anything like that. I mean, can that be possibly happening? Sure, I think that's, there is a possibility. Um, it's hard to measure what's, what's the impact of that in the silver market. But I think investors that uh, really, I mean, there's, there's a whole case on the macro side that you can lean on in order to be buying silver today. And it has nothing to do with the, the suppression of the price. It has a lot more to do with the fact that silver is not only cheap relative to other commodities, it's also cheap relative to gold. And 74 is the gold to silver ratio today. The last times we saw that, it wasn't at the peak of the silver market. It was also times that you should be buying the miners. And so um, there's a lot of signs that we are at the beginning of a precious metals cycle, not at the end of one. We haven't seen MAs, we haven't seen equity issuances, we haven't seen leverage, uh, CapEx is low. So all those signs show, look, we're at the very beginning, the first the early innings of a bull market. And so you wanna own silver if you're in that position. Thank <music> you.